Hello and welcome back to the PPD YouTube channel folks. Clyde Lindsay here from Pixel Pro Displays. It's great to have you back again. We hope you've had a fantastic week and we look forward to another exciting weekend. This weekend I'll be at the Michigan Mini and last weekend we were at the Ohio Light Up Ohio Mini and the week before that we were at oh my goodness I've lost track where we've oh the Florida Mega Mini and then before that well we were out in St. Louis and then after that God knows where we're gonna go but we've been everywhere that we can be and it has been an exciting month here at Pixel Pro Displays. It's May now we just rolled into May this is May 2nd and there are new if you're in the club there's new uh, sequences in the club if you haven't uh, gone over to check out our new songs go ahead and head over to P P pixelprodisplays.com and check out the new songs but today's lesson is going to be something I haven't exactly dialed in on and shown anybody it's going to be more of specific things that I do while I'm sequencing and how you can do it too to help you speed up your sequencing processes stay tuned and we're gonna get started Welcome back guys, it's Clyde here. So let's go ahead and get started. I wanna share with you some short little sequencing uh, hints. And I hope you noticed that MP3. We had a little bit of fun the other night in the Zoom room um, and JR created a contest. We wrote a song using AI and uh, the whole group got together, came up with some fantastic lyrics and AI spit out this amazing MP3. Uh, and if you go to this link in our PPU Facebook group, I'll put the link in the video description if you want to uh, join in. You can win if you uh, if you create a music video based on the MP3. Uh, you can win two Phoenix Ray 300 watt moving headlights. So uh, I'll link that in the video description. So there's another contest, and we're all there's always something going on in the PPU Facebook group. So, but by all means, uh, you can uh, join in the fun. Um, now, I want to share with you two things that I do uh, in sequencing that is very consistent, meaning I, I do this in pretty much every sequence, and I need what I like to call shortcut keys for. Um, I did a couple, well, but might have been a year, maybe two years ago, I streamed a video in uh, on our Tuesday night Zoom room, and it's on key bindings. They're right over there. Uh, if you look at the key binding video, it tells you all about them. You can re you can watch that video very specifically and go through it in great detail. But what I want to share with you is what I learned whenever I did that video was how helpful and how easy it was to now quickly add in and out fade out transition it's a state of a of an effect that you can apply to any effect you have selected regardless if they're the same effects or not so you could have three or four different effects and you can apply the same setting to those effects uh, if there's something like let's say the the buffer or uh, whatever whatever the you know, in my case I used it for transitions so let me show you how that works if we go in and we hit file and we go into the key bindings menu and we scroll down here uh, there is a section here that I created that says apply settings right here so that so that apply settings there is very helpful in if I want to apply in a setting so I can click add apply setting and what I had to do was I had to assign this some sort of shortcut key that made sense to, for me to constantly use or to use pretty often and in my instance it came out to be uh, use the number key so number one through eight and I have the control key with a Y I put a yes I want to use control plus the number one control plus the number two control control plus the number three and then I had to learn what X lights coded in an effect to add in to the apply settings so Basically, I clicked Add Apply Settings, and then I said, what key am I going to use? And I said, key number one. So I would go here, and I would find the key and do the drop down, and I selected the number one. And am I going to use the Control key with it? Am I going to use the Alternate key? Am I going to use the uh, Shift key? And so what I wanted to do was I had to go find out uh, if I'd use these, because I use the key bindings for a lot of stuff. Did I use something? And these were things I hadn't used yet, so I used the numbers. 
and they were phenomenal. They worked really, really, really well. Uh, but really, really simply, I, I like to use fade in and fade out, and I learned how to get the code, and here's how I got the code. Uh, let's go ahead and close this, and I'll, I'll just put the effect down. Uh, so there's no transitions in or out on here. Uh, if we put the, let's say, the Y, the butterfly effect, uh, that's a shortcut key I just placed down. doesn't matter where you put it. All right, so let's say I was going to uh, have, let's say, a point 0.1 in transition. I could hit the point, and I could hit the number 1 on the keyboard, and you can see that uh, I, I have a... Uh, point 0.1 added to that selected uh, butterfly. We zoom in, you can see that little itty bitty green line there. I'm zooming even more. And uh, yeah, so there's there's point 0.1 of a transition. But generally, I like to use transitions that are at a specific length. Um, and, and you can manually edit these if you want, uh, obviously. But it's nice to have the code to automatically fill things in. So let's say I wanted a 0.25 transition. And you know, you could automatically come up here and you could select in the drop down and do 0.25 transition in. Uh, and then obviously it says fade, and it's fade because that's the default. But um, but what I want to do, let's say instead of it being 25, I want to quickly change it from 25 to 50. I've loaded this key in here so that I can hit control and I can hit the number 6 key, and that's my shortcut settings key to 0.5 of a transition. Now, I, I actually go into this into the other video, like this has really changed my sequencing. This has really sped me up a lot. It's really, you know, made it easier for me to quickly go in and change, let's say, a number of effects here. Uh, there's a bunch of effects here. Um, or maybe I have a bunch of random effects. They don't have to be the, the same. They can all be different effects. And what if I want to put a simple in transition? I use control number three, and there's a 0.5 transit, or that's a... That's a 0.5 out transition on all of them. You see how that all filled it in right there for those. Oh, let me scroll over there. You can see there's, look at all those out transitions. Now, if I want to give them all like a point, a point, or a 1.0 transition in, a one second in transition, you can click on these. And if you click on them uh, individually, you can see, look, oh, there's a transition of in. Oh, it says 0.75. Well, I could do these ones all at point. Uh, at 1.0, so one second fade in. So you can see that very quickly how useful this can be in all of your sequencing, especially uh, if, if you're trying to do a bulk edit, you can also still bulk edit because we didn't get these ones down here at the bottom. You can still right click over the drop down and bulk edit. But it's also a nice function to be able to use that shortcut uh, key to quickly put those transitions in there. Now, the now here's the thing: you need to learn what is the actual text that you need that's inside there. And if we take this, let's say the candle effect here, I'm going to go ahead and copy this. If we have an in transition, and we see that there's an in and an out there, what we can do is we can open up a Notepad. And you can come in here and paste the effect. And what you need to look for now is you need to look for something to do with transition. And here is fade in. You see how that says fade in? And it says t, comma t underscore text control underscore fade in. And then this is 1.0 comma. This is the data that the key bindings needs in order to create the, the setting, the effect setting, and it will automatically apply it using that key binding. So what if, and I'll go ahead and mess with mine because I don't care. I'm going to go ahead and select this and copy this. And what if we come in here, we go back into our key binding, and we say, we scroll down to the one I've already created. But if you were going to create a new one, you'd hit Apply Settings, or you'd hit Add Apply Settings, rather. And you could hit Control, oops, uh, Control Key, or Alternate, or Shift, or uh, uh, maybe you could do Shift and uh, Shift Control. We'll try Shift Control. How about that? Shift Control will do the number one key. And... Now we'll come down here to the effects setting and we'll hit control V and we're going to change this so that we see that it's a change. Hopefully this works. I haven't tested it. We're doing it kind of live-ish um, and we'll hit four. Four seconds fade in. There's no pr transition in anywhere that I have preset that's four seconds in. And now if I go ahead and click save, 
that should add that to this bottom line. See here how it says control and shift. Uh, oh wait, it does. It says alternate. Let me change that. Let me let me do that. There we go. So there, that fixed it. Control and shift because I can hold those two keys at the same time, and we use the number one. Maybe that will work. Well, we'll try it, right? And let's go in and click save and close. And I'll go up here. I'll just place the Y for butterfly effect. And we do shift control and the number. Oh, I have to be selected on it first. Shift control and the number one. And there you can see that it's like super easy to go in and program. Now, if you wanted to have the, the custom fade out, you'd have to create another transition uh, or another effect setting. And the, the text that you would need, need is this here. Well, now that we kind of know this, we can go through and we can make a shortcut key for a significant number of these uh, different situations that you might want to use them for. So the other situation that I find immensely helpful because I sequence in a lot of groups, another one that I find super helpful, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take this, I'm going to collect, uh, I'm going to delete this. Another one I find super useful is the render styles. I use render styles pretty much in every grouping that I could, you could possibly imagine. And you can see here that if we're in a group, and let, let me get rid of the transition so it's just a little bit simpler, right? So here's the effect, no, no, no changes, there's no setting changes, it's default. In fact, let's just use the on effect. The, there might be less code there to read. Uh, and we go over here to render style. And one of the render styles I like to do, that you might like to do, is per model default. Uh, what if we do a per model default on here, and actually let's do single strand, A for arch. There we go. And uh, there's lots of colors there selected. And it, this is just the basic uh, uh, per model default. Let's do chase. There we go. And you can see how it's going straight across the whole house there. And we change this to per model default. And we'll make it nice and big. There we go. So there you got your your single strand chase going off of that, and we have we have two colors selected. It doesn't matter about the colors. What I'm interested in is per model default. Let's go ahead, right click, copy the effect. Let's go to Notepad, and we open this up and we paste it in Notepad. Now we're looking for the words per model default. So just right here at the beginning, see this says B underscore choice buffer style equal per model default looks like it's right at the beginning here so if we hit control C and we go to we go back into our um, back into our file and we go into key bindings uh, and we do add apply effects settings and let's say we would like to do uh, uh, a key let's say key number uh, two number two and then we do control and shift and we apply our effect settings control V that's this choice buffer style that's this right here that's this code right here that everything between the comma and the beginning and we'll go ahead and click save a couple times and we'll hit the close button so now now if we have let's say a butterfly effect we'll put butterfly on the windows you can see it there let me delete all this stuff so you can actually see the effects working so there is there's the butterfly on the on the on the all house there a little bit better so let's apply it control shift and number two and now you can see that the per model default render style you can pause the video go back and look and you can see that it automatically put it to the per model default now where is this helpful well if you're quickly sequencing and you've got to stop and you've got to go over here and search through this whole list of different uh, render styles that's where it's super helpful so guys, this week it's all about getting a little bit more organized with sequencing and not only that, it's it's paying attention to what you're doing and how you can use some of the little things that are built into x lights to kind of simplify what you're doing and to get effect settings set up real quickly and simply using those key bindings. Go back and watch the PPD webinar on it. You can set up all of those key bindings, all the shortcut keys. I've had them set up for years. 
they are huge help for me. Probably one of the best uh, suggestions whenever I can uh, uh, discuss things about, you know, kind of making it easier to sequence or kind of simplifying the process. This is just another addition to that. So uh, with that being said, guys, uh, that's everything I have for you this week. We hope you enjoyed this Twinkle Tip Friday video. I am on my way out to Michigan. We're going to have the Michigan Mini and we're super excited to go. So hopefully you're going to be there. Uh, if you like the video this week, please give us a huge thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the uh, YouTube channel here at Pixel Pro Display. You never miss a video. We put out a ton of videos yesterday or two days ago. Man, like we had, oh, it must have been must have been six or seven videos so uh don't forget to hit the bell for notifications tons of stuff always coming and if you appreciate the things we do here at pixel pro displays consider joining the ppd sequence club where you get one awesome sequence each and every month just for ppd sequence club members we do two we did two this past month you're welcome to go check them out they're on the ppd uh triple play page you get three choices each month uh, two, of course, were new. And um, as always, if you love these cool shirts just like this, you can get them for yourself from a pixelprodisplays.com website. Just click on the store and look for our gear or just type in the search bar and look for t-shirts. They'll come right up. Guys, thank you for joining me. This is Clyde signing out. Have a wonderful weekend and we'll see you in the next video. Take care and bye for now. You're just a pixel dancing in my dreams. The hardest Naked, send them now, please.